March 8th, 2023, 11 o'clock a.m. We're live here on the Grudge World Life Inspirational Network once again. When the darkness falls, when the shadows become deep and black, the silent pall of evil settles upon the earth. Who dares to search? Who dares to see what walks in the night? If you dare, welcome to the Tomb of Terror, ladies and gentlemen. It's a rainy Wednesday morning here in the Tomb of Terror. Um, you're probably used to looking at comic books here. I think I've run out of comic books. I've shown you thousands of them. I I could show them to you again for those of you that are new, and I probably will. But for right now, I'm looking at records, uh, albums. Um, so let's look at those. Let's file them away. We can't listen to them here on YouTube, I don't think, because, but oh well. So let's take a look at some records. Um, what I can do is recommend them to you, and then you could seek them out, or you could uh, simply find, uh, probably here on YouTube, they they have most of these records that you can play. Why, this is uh, Johnny Burnett Sings. They put a special sick sticker on here pointing out his hit, Big Big World. Um, Johnny Burnett, with the Johnny Burnett Trio, was uh, one of the great rockabilly musicians, but uh, um, later, um, later he, he was an ex-boxer. In his later years, um, you, uh, the, the song "You're 16, You're Beautiful in Your Mind" is one of the great rock and roll songs. Um, but uh, um, yeah, his rockabilly stuff, like tear it up and all that it's just phenomenal what do we have here mickey finn's america's number one speakeasy okay so the star of the riotous nbc television show play the music they're famous for that dynamic exciting hip hoke powerhouse sound strictly for fun Okay, so what else do we have here? Another uh, Mickey Finn's record, the West Coast number one speakeasy, music of the roaring twenties, thirties, forties, fifties, and sixties, plus ten violins. All right. Let's see what else we got here. It's over here. I guess I should mention that uh, yesterday, was it the day before yesterday, I think, is the, uh, is the anniversary of the Battle of the Alamo. And, of course, the Battle of the Alamo, you'd say, well, they were all defeated. They were um, all killed. But it was, in a way, a victory because the battle cry of remember the Alamo became, you know, galvanized the Texan troops and, uh, and uh, caused Texas to become a country, which later became a state in the United States. Um, anyway, that happened March I think that was it was it the fifth or was it the sixth? Anyway, uh, the final battle that caused the war for Texas independence was April fifteenth, somewhere in there. The Battle of San Jacinto, and uh, the Texan army uh, stopped on uh, and rested on uh, in my ancestor's land, Sam McCarley. And uh, I think they 
used 4,000 fence posts for fuel. They killed, they ate a whole bunch of the cattle and pigs and uh, basically there were like I think a thousand soldiers I think in the Texan army. Anyway, they basically plundered the farm, um, but um, I think you know they had permission, but you know. Uh, years later, I think I think a couple of years after that battle, um, the, the Sam McCarley passed away. His widow later was given, I think, six hundred and forty dollars, or was it four hundred and sixty, something like that. Um, she was paid for you know what the soldiers uh, used on on their land, uh, which was a lot of money back then. So anyway. Uh, the Battle of San Jacinto. Yes, here's some, speaking of the Old West, here's a music from the original soundtracks of A Fistful of Dollars and For a Few Dollars More. Composed and conducted by Ennio Morricone. My goodness. Um, of course, there the there are individual soundtrack albums. This is just the here's the the soundtrack from Mash, not the TV show, but the original movie. Um, the the movie was a very different experience from the TV show. It was uh, far darker in in uh, humor and. Uh, Anyway, uh, I like the movie. Um, the amazing 17-year-old Leslie Gore. I'll cry if I want to. It was um, almost all the songs have to do with crying. Cry me a river, no more tears left to cry. Judy's turn to cry. Cry and you cry alone. It's a wonderful album. But uh, this was... Uh, she was fantastic, and she uh, she was going to play Poison Ivy on the 1966 through 68 Adam West Batman TV show. Um, they had the script written and everything, and at the last minute they decided just to make her because there was going to be Catwoman and Poison Ivy, and instead they uh, they wrote her in. They changed the script and made her. Uh, like Miss Kitty Cat or something, or like Catwoman's teenage assistant, instead of making her Poison Ivy. Anyway, you would have had a little bit different comic book TV history had that occurred. What else we got here? Oh, we've got some biker movie music. No. Whoa, shit. Um... These were sitting on the floor, and they got cat. Uh, the cat hair has got on them, so I'm having to pull. Uh, it's the original motion picture soundtrack recording from Roger Corman's *Devil's Angels*. Now, shit. Um, now you see, the arrows, Davy Allen and the arrows, is this amazing fuzz tone uh, rock and roll music. And that was used in these uh, in these biker movies. I'm gonna make a special stack for the biker movies. You've got to uh, you've got to listen to Davy Allen and the Arrows. Look it up on YouTube if you don't already know about this. I'm just I don't mean to insult your intelligence if you already know about these bands, but if you don't, I'm steering you towards some really great music. It's the soundtrack to a racer head. In heaven, everything is fine. Okay. That's a David Lynch movie, of course. I'm sure you're familiar with that. There's a nail on the floor. That's not, not a safe thing, ladies and gentlemen, just so you know. Here's James Bond's greatest hits.
It's a French, I guess French, maybe, hopefully not Canadian, but how would you know the difference? I, I think it's French. Um, it's got all the sound, all the themes up through, all the way up through For Your Eyes Only by Sheena Easton. Now, remember Starlog Magazine, they had their own record label there for a little while, and they'd advertise records in the back of their magazine. This uh, soundtrack for It's Alive 2 by Bernard Herrmann is on the Starlog Records label. I think I remember they had like uh, several uh, science fiction horror soundtracks that you could order. So anyway, it's just the soundtrack, I guess, that hadn't been issued. Here's the soundtrack to Halloween 2. Halloween 2, amazing. All right, let's see. Um, Rudy Ray Moore in Dolomite. Here, Rudy do phrases from the motion picture Dolomite. I like that painting. The first time I ever heard Rudy Ray Moore, uh, a friend of mine's brother brought a Rudy Ray Moore record uh, home from, uh, what was that shop's name? Uh, shoot, it was a collectible record store. Uh, Connoisseurs Collectibles, and, and uh, he just bought it because he thought the cover was hilarious. And... Uh, we listened to it, and we, we, it was, I was in college, we laughed so hard, it was unbelievable. Um, yes, um, there's, um, uh, the Big Bopper, Texas DJ, that, um, uh, of course, you know the song, Hello Baby. He perished with Buddy Holly and Richie Valens and the pilot. Um, that would have been about a month ago, 60-something um, years ago, um, beginning of February. You probably know the song, um, American Pie. By Don McLean, where he's, you know, February made me shiver with every paper I delivered. Here's the Hellcats, another one of those biker movies. This is about a female biker gang. Look at that. And most of these biker movies are going to have music by Davy Allen and the Euros. And, um, listening to Alex Jones in the background here. Yeah, uh, see, one of them has a eye patch. Um, there were several uh, movies about female biker gangs. One was She Doubles on Wheels by Herschel Gordon Lewis. That was a, a fun movie too. But it didn't have uh, didn't have Davy Allen and the Arrows music though. All right. Here's a uh, an album by Dave Yellen and the Euros. I mean, you can get the, like I said, just type it into YouTube and listen to this music. Um, Apache 65, come on, do the Freddy Scratchy Twine Time. The Euros, featuring Dave Yellen. Um, this is the band. That's Dave Yellen. This is one of the great bands. Look, I'm not going to steer you wrong. Listen to Davey Allen and the Euros. Listen to the Johnny Burnett Trio. Look up this, you know, I'm going to give you homework assignments. <laughs> Listen to this music. And then, you know, I'll, I'll steer you how this music evolves over time. Into, uh, and you'll have a, 
Maybe you won't have a wonderful record collection, but you'll at least know what to dial up on your streaming services. I don't think people... Well, there are people that are buying records now. It's, it's like the new hip thing for younger people. They go out looking for records. Um, Kevin at Gotham City Comics was telling me that, uh, you know, the new thing for, for uh, the younger people is uh, they, they call it buying vinyls. They're looking for vinyls. And so the price of records is really going up. Uh, I've been buying records all my life. My, rec my comic book collection is not that great. You've seen it, you know. It would be a lot better. Two things had happened. One, if my mom was had been more easygoing about letting me buy used books when I was a kid. Um, my mom worried a lot and was also a child of the Depression. She was a little girl during the 1930s. She was a teenager during World War II. First of all, it was considered to her um, like the worst thing to be buying used stuff. If you bought used things, it was just like so low class. But here in the night, but I was growing up in the 1970s and I wanted the comic books of the 1960s. I mean, I love the comics of the early 70s, but I knew that was the stuff that I needed. And it was within my grasp because in the early 74, 75, you could buy a Silver Surfer number one for $5. You could buy most Marvel comics for a couple of, from the 60s, the Silver Age, for a couple of bucks or a dollar fifty. Of course, you realize that a couple of bucks is not a couple of bucks in today's money. Money had more value then. But um, there weren't comic stores, but you know, I remember this one kid was at a flea market, a kid, a teenager, and older than me, had all these comics, man. But she didn't like me buying used books. One, she didn't like me buying used stuff because it was uh, just unseemly. And also she thought if you buy used books, they have possibly, what did she call them? Book lice or something. She thought there'd be bugs in them that would, you know, get into all your books and eat them. And it was just a terrifying concept. So, you know, it wasn't until the late 70s when Lone Star, uh, Lone Star Comics came along. And I was a little older and I just bought the used books. And I was too old to listen. You know, I was no longer a little kid. And, uh, you know, I was like approaching teenage years. And, and I went and got those books anyway. And... But then, by then, it was too late. I mean, I still got a pretty respectable a number of Fantastic Four between, you know, before issue 100. But I don't have any of those early ones. And and only, uh, you know, some of the important issues. I'm not going to use the word key issue. I don't have, you know. I only have one, the middle issue of the Galactus trilogy. And, but that's the one where... Galactus first appears on uh, the cover. Um, but anyway, I could have a much better comic collection, but I was always collecting multiple things. I collected toys. I collected records. I collected comic books. I collected model kits, monster stuff, movie posters. So I wind up with a little bit of everything, but not a world-class collection of one thing. So if you've got a world-class collection of comic books because you stuck to one thing, well, that's great. I salute you. That's fine. But I was too scattershot in my collecting habits to really, and I did you know, I was never rich. So I couldn't afford all of that. But I've, you know, records were ch cheaper than they are now, and com I've developed some cool stuff. I mean, I've acquired some cool stuff, which I'm glad to share with you and tell you about. So maybe you can, because now you can get most of these re records, at least hear this, you can hear them on YouTube or, or somewhere on the computer. All right. Spike Jones. 
was, uh, if you don't know who Spike Jones was, he's basically the uh, Weird Al Yankovic of the 1940s. He was the guy that his band just played weird instruments and 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 and, and made cartoon sound effects and and did parodies of popular songs and and you've got of course a uh, Jack Davis cover. Jack Davis did a lot of album covers. Jack Davis had to be one of the richest of the comic book artists because he. He did album covers, he did tons of covers for TV Guide and other magazines, in addition to his work for Mad Magazine. And William Gaines paid pretty well. Um, he was, uh, he, he, he was, he paid pretty well. Here's uh, Chipmunks Do the Beatles, or sorry, sorry, Sang the Beatles. Um, trust me, this is hilarious. And it, it really is. And and it, what's great is when the chipmunks do like uh, Bob Dylan and stuff, because you know it's so the song is so serious, you know, and and then they, the chipmunks do their take on it. It's it's funny as heck. Here's a nice uh, shiny cover for those of you that like 1990s comics. You like the shiny covers. Well, here's a shiny album cover from the 1960s. Whoa, it really shines with that ring light. Around the World with the Chipmunks. Songs from the Alvin Show. That was a Saturday morning cartoon that was quite wonderful. Of course, the uh, cartoon show solidified the look of the Chipmunks as looking like this before they looked more like actual real Chipmunks. And of course, the, Dave Seville was the guy that figured out how to how to do this. Basically, he, he would uh, have the musicians record the, the songs, and then with uh, on on tape, he would play the record the, the the music really slow, and then he would record his voice. I don't know if he just tripled his voice or if some other people did it with him. So you'd play the music really slow, and then you. Uh, um, so you would sing Christmas to, to go along with the song. Christmas time is here. And then you'd speed up. Then you would uh, play the recording at actual s the speed it's supposed to be played at. The, 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 uh, the, the, the tape. And then you would have... Um, high-pitched singing with um, uh, and it, but it, would, it wouldn't be it wouldn't sound sped up it, it would be it would be high-pitched voices singing to the music playing at regular speed here's another one of those shiny covers this is the soundtrack to the Alvin show isn't that cool as heck Cool as heck. See, I'm. It's my. It's the new gratu. I, I'm trying not to use bad words. I say heck. This is. Um, eh. I don't know what price I paid. I don't think I paid either of those prices. At one point, it was sale price, one dollar. Someone else had four ninety eight on it. Well, anyway, it's uh, where there's life. Well, that was. Uh, this is uh, like a. I see what it is. There was a popular commercial where there's life, there's Bud, Budweiser. That was the jingle in the 50s. So I guess people like that song and they've uh, got a whole album all about drinking Budweiser beer while listening to your hi-fi. I actually got a record player that looks a lot like that upstairs. Anyway, how about that? Do you ever drink beer in a glass that looks like that? You gotta be a highfalutin, uh, high society person to do that. And look, it's an Infinity cover because the the album cover is back behind her, and it's got her on it drinking beer. It's Russ David, and you can tell he's. Look at this guy, man. He looks <laughs> looks like looks like a guy off Skid Row. Something about it's like Wally Wood with that little cigarette there. How about that? Where there's life, there's Bud Budweiser. 
What else do we have? Oh, more biker movie stuff. Hey, I promised I was going to show you uh, some uh, toys I found. I'll do that here in a second. Here's the, the one that started it all. Um, the Wild Angels with Peter Fonda and Nancy Sinatra. Look at that. That was the movie poster there. How could you uh, resist seeing that movie? This one, <laughs> it had members of the Hells Angels of Venice, California in it. Um, let me tell you. The, the song, what was it? Oh, the one that was the big hit is Blues Theme. And the theme from Wild Angels. That Yeah, this is Davey Allen and the Euros. This is fantastic uh, stuff. And then there's volume two of the soundtrack. It would it didn't all fit. It, this sold so well. It's like, hey, we've got more music. Let's put out a volume two of the soundtrack. Um, now it's got blues theme, but it has a it's a vocal version. Yeah, this is uh, good stuff. What else do we have here? Oh boy, well, you know, as about the time that this house was built, John Philip Sousa was uh, probably as popular as the Beatles. You know, it's uh, this was like really popular music a hundred years ago. Anyway, this is the, look, it's the Reader's Digest album. And they got R.D. on the drum, isn't that great? Oh, it's a old-time radio broadcast of the Green Hornet. Justice Wears a Blindfold, Murders in the Dope Racket. Green Hornet started as a, uh, on radio. The Green Hornet and his faithful sidekick, Cato, roared through 18 years of radio adventure in the world's fastest car, the Black Beauty. First heard on Detroit's WXYZ in 1936. This fast-paced crime adventure show opened with the lines, he hunts the biggest of all crime. No, he hunts the biggest game of all. Public enemies who try to destroy our America. Behind the mask of the Green Hornet was newspaper publisher Britt Reed, grandnephew of another masked crusader, the Lone Ranger. Like his famous ancestor, Britt was dedicated to routing evil and exposing injustice. And there were plenty of both to keep the Green Hornet buzzing. His busy newspaper, The Daily Sentinel, was a perfect instrument to uncover the seamier side of life, and his reporting staff never failed to become hopelessly entangled with some shady affair from which only the Green Hornet's sting could free them. So, hop into Black Beauty once more as the Green Hornet and Cato roar through two adventure pack stories. So, this is from 1977. So, you'd buy an album and you'd get to hear two radio broadcasts and, and basically... Uh, you know, an hour. But now, with YouTube, you could probably listen to 24, 48 hours of Green Hornet broadcast on a playlist. Um, so, and it used to be, you really had to seek it out. Drew the dog, what are you up to? Don't mess with that stuff. Uh, look at this, The Incredible World of James Bond. It's a very strange looking record. This um, has a strange cover, one of the James Bond music. Um, here's Huckleberry Hound tells the stories of Uncle Remus, which um, Disney, you know, the, the Disney song, I, I mean, that started every uh, wonderful world of Disney or a wonderful world of color or whatever. It was called when you were watching the Sunday night. Every Sunday night, you know, you would have Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom, right? And, and, and maybe they, your local station would show a rerun of Ron Ely's, Eli, however you, Ron Eli's Tarzan, or, you know, from the late 60s. And, and then the network would come on, I think at 6, wasn't it at 6 Central? 
you'd have the wonderful world of Disney on against 60 minutes, at least in the 70s. But the Disney show went back to the 50s. It had been on uh, ABC for forever. It, it was on when they opened Disneyland in, what, 55? That, that wonderful world of Disney was on showing the new park. Well, anyway... Uh, It always started with uh, the, 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 the music that you associate with Disney, zippity doo da, you know, played with fanfare. Well, they're taking that song out completely from the Disney park because it's associated with the movie Song of the South, which they've completely, completely uh, buried. So. Um, that was a cool song, you know, but, but it's, it's now um, forbidden. That was announced a couple of days ago. All right, what do we got here? Another, I've got a lot of these Henry Mancini records, of course, you know. Henry Mancini from the Pink Panther. Here's um, Uniquely Mancini. Here's Mambo, Johnny Conque, and Hector Palo. Okay, this is a a smaller record you call these EPs. Why look, it's Dawn, The Four Seasons. Go Away and 11 other great songs. There they are. Frankie Valley featuring. That's weird. This is strange. <laughs> yeah, okay. Anyway, I don't know. It's from the Jennings record collection. I, what I was confused by is it's, uh, it's in, in quotation marks featuring the, quote, sound of Frankie Valley, end quote. And what I was wondering is, okay, is this the... The Four Seasons without Frankie Valley, but no, I think this is a, 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 a. All right, never mind. Uh, what do we have over here? Kevin Spacey is a Satan worshipping scumbag, uh, just to have you know, that hangs out with Jeffrey Epstein and all of Jelaine Maxwell. And he was a terrible Bobby Darren. He thought he'd play a Bobby. Bobby Darren is great. I didn't accept Kevin Spacey as Bobby Darren. That was ridiculous. This is Bobby Darren at the Copa. Bobby Darren's great. Okay, here's one of these. Uh, Power Records made these comic book, these little comic book and record. Uh, you could read along with a comic book thing, but you know, um, sometimes they they were great. I mean, they really the acting was pretty atrocious in them. Sometimes they put out these ones with completely horrible cover art. This is horrendous uh, on both sides. Um, here they're advertising that you can get these book record sets, which are really much better. Oh, this actually has uh, some of the book and record sets on there. It has Spider-Man, The Mark of the Man-Wolf. So it, it probably is, is those without the, the, the bing, you know, telling you to go to the next page. Um, here's a, this is, the, this is a different one. So yeah. It's got the same back cover, though. They were a little lazy there. Um, this is the one I, I bought when I was in fifth grade, and it's just like, I thought, well, the other two I bought later, it's volume two, and it's just like really bad, and he's, he's like, look at these guys here. Earth is doomed, Spider-Man. Save me, Spider-Man. Uh, it's like I read the Spider-Man comic. It wasn't anything like that. It's like really dopey. But anyway. 
Oh, the back. They try to recreate what it looks like to read a Spider-Man comic, but completely, you know, it looks like it was drawn by... Really, it looks like it was drawn by a high schooler in art class. You know, it's a talented high schooler in art class, but it doesn't look professional. Oh, here's some more of uh, Tav Falco and Panther Burns, which I told you about last night. Man, I don't know if you've listened to any of that. Anyway, I like his cover of White Silver Sands. That's good. <laughs> All right. Well, um, I was in the middle of saying something on, I think, the last episode, and I got cut off. I tried doing these little 15-second shorts here on YouTube. And uh, because I was told, well, if you do that, maybe you'll get some new subscribers. Uh... It's like advertising so I did it and it shows you know some of them got like a lot of views some not many and, and uh, I guess they just pop up when people stream because YouTube is trying to imitate TikTok and have it stream where you get these videos that are skinny so they fit an, an idiot's cell phone and they can scream and they can stream that's maybe scream but stream through them or whatever you call it flip through them and uh, so um, it showed me on the YT on the YouTube studio that a hundred percent of the people that had uh, looked at them were women and they were like between 20 and 30 so it's apparently something that only women do is look through that stuff on YouTube and so uh 30% of them, like, actually watched the whole 15 seconds. Most of them kept, you know, swiping away. So anyway, it got me about five new subscribers. And then I lost. I got up to 503, then it went down to 501. Then in the middle of the night last night went to 500. Then it went back up to 501. Um, and and I, people are saying, hey, well, you need to have your... 500 subscriber party before it goes back under 500. Yeah, I, I know that because it will. But I don't know. Maybe people like me talking about records. Maybe that'll get me more uh, people watching. I don't know. I don't know because I've never. I've never um, had interest that corresponded with normal humans. And I've never had a, a great amount of friends in my life. Well, I did for a while when I was in college. But, um, so I don't know. Well, I mean, I have a lot of friends now. Um, you know, the four-color fossils and stuff. That, that are, But they're not, like, local friends. Uh, but um, I've met some of them, actually. They've come and visited me here. Here's... Uh, twist with the lions they didn't have to pay much for the album art you know they don't have to pay an artist or a photographer but it is pretty striking you know from a distance you can see hey that's a twist record and it's by the lions okay this is sins of satan And it says, Thou shalt boogie forever. Now, I don't remember that. That might be, is that the 11th commandment? I don't remember that part from the Bible. Thou shalt boogie forever. Sins of Satan. Okay. And, uh, <laughs> um, Yeah, this you know what this looks like when you go to the state fair or you go to a carnival and you go in the spook house and get the, this looks like the art they paint on the sides of the spook house. <laughs> the songs are We Are the Sins of Satan, Devil's Disco, Your Love is Like Candy, 
How would you feel in Sunshine Girl? Those that's on side one. Side two is Dance and Free Your Mind, Rope a Dope, Autumn, and Heavy Traffic. Produced by Jimmy Roach. Spiritual Blessings, Martha Jean, the Queen. Recorded at United Sounds, Detroit, Michigan. Illustrations by Jim O'Connell. We got to give him credit for this. Uh, so I would assume that this is catering to the Parliament Funkadelic crowd. Okay. Um, childhood Crush and Margaret. By the way, uh, Anne Margaret is her first name. It's not. It's her name is. Her first name is not Anne. Her last name is not Margaret. It's Anne Dash Margaret. That's that's her first name, Anne Margaret. And then I like her last name is Olson, right? Anyway, so it's it's so basically Anne Margaret is like saying Cher or Beyonce or you know no it isn't because I, I don't want to equate Anne Margaret with Beyonce. I don't know. Maybe Beyonce is wonderful. I don't know her music. But she's a great singer. I always like uh, I always liked Anne Margaret. It's the vivacious one, Miss Anne Margaret. There are these uh, are three of us, I think, at Regency Place Elementary in San Antonio, Texas in third grade. And we all had crushes on Raquel Welch, Anne Margaret, and Sharon Tate. And we were so mad a bit at, at Charles Manson for killing Sharon Tate. This is about 73, 74. And we just go around the playground talking about Anne Margaret and Raquel Welch in Star Trek and acting out, you know, Kirk and Spock and McCoy. And uh, I don't remember. I don't think we played Lost in Space because then someone would have to be Dr. Smith and that would be disturbing. Look at this, Don Martin. You know, Jack Davis was doing album covers. Don Martin probably figured, hey, I'll get in on that. And, uh, you know, because he could draw an album cover. Probably he drew this in about five minutes, you know, uh, maybe 15 tops. And, and then he got paid to do an album cover. Percussion, international, international. It's Pierre du Jardin in the stereosonic orchestra. I think I've got several Don Martin album covers. It's uh, something, huh? Oh, okay, so you know, if you've never seen Hairspray, the John Waters movie, it's a fantastic movie. And you can show it to kids today and they'll love it because they'll love seeing the dancing and the music. Even kids of today, I tell you, will respond to it. But I'm talking only about the John Waters movie, not the Broadway play that was made from it or the movie that was made from that Broadway play. They're terrible. The original John Waters movie is about a uh, local TV uh, dance, music, rock and roll dance show in Baltimore, and it's uh, the Corny Collins show. But it's really, they changed the name, it was really based on a Baltimore guy, Buddy Dean. This. Man, it looks like I might have paid thir I need to get that price tag off of here. It's TV Record Hop. And it's got Buddy Dean, WJZ TV, Baltimore, Maryland. So that's the real guy um, that Corny Collins is based on. There, ladies and gentlemen. <sighs> oh, and it's got uh, Billy Muir's Rocking Guitars, which is probably where I first heard amazing rock and roll music is Billy Muir because I had this Aquaman record uh, from Leo Records and, and they're the Aquaman theme I learned late, years later is a song called Tiger Guitars by Billy Muir's um, Supersonic Guitars I believe it's uh, Rocking Guitars Billy Muir anyway it's it's probably one of the greatest songs I get this stuff damn sticker off of here I don't know what I'm thinking it's not a great cover um, oh, I showed you a uh, Irish Macaulay poster yesterday, and um, and this is also Irish Macaulay. This is Latin twist 
Louis, Louis Martinelli and the Continentals. She's just either got a tan or some spray on uh, so she could look a little bit darker complected. And uh, I guess Irish McCall is a natural blonde. I don't know. This might actually be her natural hair color. She put it, if not, she had blonde hair to play Sheena, Queen of the Jungle, based on the comic book. That's what she's mostly famous for, Irish McCullough, for the 1950s Sheena TV series. Um, which, uh, which, and he, he she was a childhood crush of R. Crumb. You know, he loves seeing Sheena on television. Of course, it would have, if I wasn't born then, or I, it would have been a childhood crush of mine too, because I love that show Sheena you can see episodes of Sheena Queen of the Jungle on YouTube as well okay well yeah so uh, anyway so we need to have a 500th uh, celebration let me just test this and see how it look Well, folks, it's the 500th anniversary. No, no, that wouldn't be it. Well, folks, the Tomb of Terrors has, has its 500th subscriber. And we're here, picking and grinning. We're going to have a real hullabaloo, a real shindig here on the Grotto to Our Love channel. I just want to see what it looks like back here on the stairs, how the light looks. Probably be better at night without all this bright light coming in. I am going to do a live show Friday night. I don't want to go on against Horror Mike. That would be disrespectful. Or the uh, the puppet show, uh, the geeky puppet show, whatever. So I might have to do it a little bit later, but it'll be a live broadcast. Some friends are going to be on there. And some friends I haven't contacted yet, I'll see if they can come on. That's probably what I'll do, the 500th anniversary. but Not anniversary, 500th subscriber. To me, that's a big deal because I, I, I've been trying to get to 500 subscribers. Really, I'm trying to get to 1,000 subscribers. I'm not going to lie to you, but well, whether that will happen, who knows. Oh, what's this? I've Got Wings. Published by the U.S. Army Air Force, Office of Flying Safety. Hey, wait for me. So, uh, I guess this is a, uh, yeah, I guess so. The bird's saying, hey, wait for me. Inside, it's a really cool, uh, really cool comic art. I guess it's teaching, teaching uh, Air Force pilots. <laughs> is uh, Well, there wasn't the Air Force during uh, World War II. It wasn't the Air Force yet. It was the, uh, yeah, I think this is, uh, Will Eisner art. That sure does look like Will Eisner art. Is this Will Eisner? I bet it is. He does. He did a lot of stuff for the Army. Anyway, it says U.S. Army Air Forces. I think the Air Force was later made separate. Let me see if this is Will Eisner. Yeah, that to me looks... Let's see. I know he did a lot of uh, preventive, preventive maintenance... Um, comic art for uh, for the army do they even have credit do they give credit hmm. yeah what do you think that's got to be Will Eisner art I remember getting this for a couple of bucks at an army uh like an army collectible store. I, I, if it's not Will Eisner, it's someone connected to him. See, it's it's neat. I'll show you more of this if you want me to show you more of it. What do we have here? It's uh, Batman and Mister Freeze Sub Zero. That's some nice art based on the animated series. Yeah, it's got some art inside, kind of like a big little book. Oh, 
is this? Shadow Castle from Scholastic Books. Oh, look, it's an Ed Wood Jr. book. Hollywood Rat Race. You know, he Ed, Ed Wood made movies, but um, he also wrote a lot of books. And he'd write books based on his movies. Uh, it says, Hollywood, Ed Wood Jr.'s Hollywood Rat Race has never seen the light of day until now. Wood tap, tapped out each word on a battered old typewriter at, in the dingy light of a dive on Hollywood Boulevard, pouring his heart and soul into this primer on the movie biz. Part how-to manual, part memoir, rat race is entirely unbridled, unfettered Ed Wood. Um, so anyway, this is, I guess, an unpublished Ed Wood manuscript, which I haven't read yet. Um, oh, this is something. American Urban Legends and Their Meanings, The Vanishing Hitchhiker. So, um, oh, i got to get that sticker off that record. Oh, boy. So how are you guys doing this wonderful Wednesday? Tonight, um, about 7, well, about right at, right at 7 p.m. sharp, central time, uh, the four color fossils will go on the air. I will be there. Um, I, um, Look at the inside sleeve. That's really cool. Tucker Carlson. That's something else. <laughs> You're probably not allowed to talk about that on YouTube. Tucker Carlson. Maybe someday he'll be president. I, I, that guy is great. I am very encouraged by some of the great people we have on our side and what they're doing uh, to save our country. Because our country's in distress without, uh, and I don't mean in a dress like Ed Wood or an Angora sweater. I mean distress, not, a, not in distress, dis, uh, like a dis, dis. In New York, they say dis instead of this, right? I'm removing the sticker very carefully. I, wanna, I don't want to pull the... And I was successful in pulling off the sticker without disturbing the 60-year-old uh, paper uh, on because RCVA Victor uh, makes their records, uh, package their records a little bit better than most uh, human beings. So I can't really play these records for you, uh, but if you come visit me, maybe we can have a hi-fi record hop and play the, the music uh, on the stereo, but you just can't play it here on, uh, on YouTube. Okay. Having said that, ah. all right, you're free, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Let's go this way. I was, uh, I'm still moving stuff into the house and the garage. We're still, I'm still unpacking um, from. Uh, when we've moved here in April, and it's now almost April again. Okay, so uh, let's look at what we got here. Um, look at this. Uh, Toy refrigerator I've got here. How about that? 
It's a Wolverine refrigerator. Do you see that? Big Brother is watching you. And it's really true. Look, there's, there's Big Brother right there. I've got to find a place to put this, this bat, ladies and gentlemen. Where's a good place for him? There's got to be a place. Yikes. Where would be a good place? Um, No real place to no real place to put a bat around here, man. Okay, well let's sit here on the porch on this uh, rainy day. Might actually snow tomorrow. Um I'm gonna be off for a whole week. Sorry, my knees are in a lot of pain. Um, <coughs> all right, so, all right, the fact that you are, it's very, uh, this is very nice of Captain Strange Life again. Thank you for sending this tripod. The dog is barking. Why is the dog barking? All right, so I've got tons of... Um... Now, this probably came down from my older brothers. Now, you see, uh, I... Um, I was born in 1965. My older brothers were born like 10 years before me. So I inherited some of their toys. And this looks more like a 1950s manufactured thing. This might be two. I don't remember if this is one of mine, but I had all these Western play sets as a kid. This Indian, I believe, is of 1950s vintage as well. Uh, that's one of the things I was I inherited. Now it looks like my older brothers tried to paint his uh, feathers with some markers. But I um, I did get a lot of these. I think these are made in Britain. These are that's like a Civil War soldier. Now why they painted his uh, jacket brown? You know, it's probably because they're they don't really understand. What are you barking at, Drew? There's nothing out there. Anyway, so these guys, you can you can take them apart. Their heads come off and everything, and and so this one's intact. But I've got all these disembodied heads and things that I've got. Like this one here is a knight, but I've got to find his head. And a lot of times you could take the visors off their hel their helmets, and then, as I recall, he had a like a spear that he had, you know, ready to run through someone. The horse is pretty much intact. These are, I think, this is a British descent too, um, or it could be German. I don't have my reading glasses, but if I put it up to the camera, I bet it'll be visible. Is that even? Is that backwards? Where are, I think the reading glasses are in the other room. What are you barking at, Drew? What are you barking at, Drew? What are you barking at? I don't see anything out there, Drew. There's nothing to be barking at. There's nothing to be seen. Let me get some reading glasses. I, I thought I saw a pair around here. What the world is all about, and the final signed copies are available for a limited time, just a few weeks. Yes, indeed. So get your copy of the book and help keep us on air at InfoWorkTour.com. We've come a long way, but the war has not yet. Reading glasses. Here's sunglasses, not reading glasses.
Oh, here we go. And, oh, I've got a magnifying glass, too. <laughs> Info wars, ladies and gentlemen. Russian maids. Uh, that means tanks and troops crossing the, the border of Ukraine again. And uh, there will be uh, we, there will be no longer a Nord Stream two. We we will bring it into. But how will you do that? Okay. Since the project and control of the project. Well. <sighs> okay, so we were trying to figure this out. There's not enough light. Oh. It says 15th century knights. Britain's Limited, made in England, swap hat. So it's supposed to be a 15, oh, these glasses look horrible. That's what I was trying to read. Okay, here's, um, this guy seems to be intact. So I'll put him in the intact pile. And this knight went with my uh, my King Arthur Camelot uh, castle, which I'm trying to replace. This is a Mexican bandit, but his sombrero's missing, so he just has a peg on the top of his head. Let's see what this says on the bottom. Made in, Great Brit made in Great Britain. I believe that says... T Whoa, dude. Gosh darn, it, it's not easy. I think it says Tempo Toys. Was that a company in Great Britain? Uh... I'll let you figure it out. Maybe on your big screen TV that will be decipherable. Maybe not. I'll help you with the magnif... <laughs> yeah. I don't know. It's another 15th century knight. This guy... I, get, I think this guy had a flag. He's almost intact. Here's a, here's a buckaroo. What company is this from? Yeah, they made some pretty cool toys in England. Uh, I'm starting to get hungry for lunch, man. Uh, this is a toy that was a, a hand-me-down from my older brothers. Uh, looks like he had a like a lasso at one time, probably a rope. And it looks like my older brothers tried to paint him. And then this was, uh, looks like my older brother wrote my name, Ken, on it. So it would be established that that was then my property. But I got a bunch of these horses without riders. And they might just look cool on a shelf together. Like, uh, um, Meyer Greenblatt has a whole bunch of horses all together. Um, and that might make a cool display. Here's another horse. Yeah, I got tons of horses. This is one of those Britons, because it's got, like, you can tell it. That's a cool one. Um. Somewhere I've got a Tonto, but I gotta figure out which one, but he's, he's like uh, supposed to be on a horse, but I'm not sure what, if one of these horses is supposed to be Tonto's horse, I'm trying to remember, it won't be hard to do the research what color Tonto's horse is. Uh, 
I'm thinking it was a spotted horse. I mean, Lone Ranger had a white horse, and then Lone, then Tonto, I thought, had like a brown horse. So was it a spotted horse? I can't remember. Here's a cover. Uh, here's a uh, stagecoach. It's got this luggage on the top. It's a very brightly colored. It had horses strapped to it. Oh, I think this is one of the horses. I think this horse was strapped to it. I'm I'm pretty sure that. And there was a there was a driver here, and then there are doors, which I think I've seen around here for this. I just got to put all this together. It's driving me crazy. Here's a covered wagon. So some of the some of those horses probably go with this one. Now if I could just find pictures of these toy sets, you know, I can figure out what horses go with what. Oh, I bet that's is this the is this the horse that the is that Tonto's horse? That looks very 1950s. Oh, and K's written on it because I guess, is that a K? Yeah, it looks like they were trying, my brother's trying. So the horse has been branded with a K because my name is Kenneth. I'm sorry, I'm sorry to shock you that my name's not really Gratu. Uh, um, here's some, here's some ones. Um, I think that was my older brother that painted some red blood on that axe. Um, what is the company that put... These are German. Well, that one says West Germany. This one, what does it say on the bottom of these? Also West Germany. See, the German ones have a distinctly different look than the British ones. Um... I just, I don't know what goes with what. Um, here's a bunch of horses, more horses. I've got these boxes that I brought down for this reason. My wife, like I collect comic books and weird stuff. My wife collects things too. And she gets the this stuff in the mail this uh, this is from some company called Besame. She collects uh, these cool looking vintage looking uh, makeup uh, things, you know, Co you know, cosmetics and, and stuff, whatever you call it. And she uh, I'm putting these boxes together because I figure these boxes could. Uh, Help me store some of these little, uh, what do I call them, like Western Army men. So this is a box that's, uh, you might as well put it to some use instead of throwing it away. You know, it's a cool looking little box. And and then this is uh, some other company called uh, Lime Crime. And it's perfectly good. And, and uh so um, I'm going to use those boxes to organize this stuff. Whoa. I've got this over here. Here's another uh, covered wagon. But see, this one, this one looks a little bit better than this one. I, I don't know. It's up for debate. Maybe I should put the covered wagons into this box, you know, and this uh, stagecoach I could fit in in here with this. I think this horse that has the fake dirt under him went with that stagecoach. These are things I haven't really played with since... Uh, you know, as a real little kid, this is a 50s looking cowboy guy that would probably go on one of these horses. But what horse does he belong on? See, this, he'd be too small to go on that horse. So I need a smaller scale horse. 
Let me use this big box. Or no. Well, it's a smaller box. This Besame box for horses. Here's a horse. Shit. I'm sorry, shoot. You didn't hear me curse. <laughs> okay. Uh, he's too... Would he fit on this guy? Does that look right? Is, that's not the right scale, is it? Does he look too small, mate? I don't know. It almost looks like he, that might be okay. This is all that's left of my childhood, King Arthur's Castle, this chimney, and I'm going to get that thing again. Here's a Civil War soldier with no head. This was part of a cannon. I remember that. Oh, here's a, a flag that would go with that guy. That, oh, okay. Watch. Watch this magic. See this, this guy? The flag needs to be put in his hand. And But then I think he still needs his uh, helmet. Uh, but for right now, he's pretty... Uh, pretty much together where he could be on display. Here's some Barbie panties. Why is that in there? Um, here's a more substantial horse. This horse has a metal base. Um, oh, this these are the horses that went with that, that stagecoach. Where, oh, over there. It's all coming back to me. From, you know, 1971. But I think that that other horse, I may... I think there were four horses. Well, anyway, it... They pulled it. Let's see. I don't know, man. I think there were four horses pulling this. But that's that's almost displayable because there's horses. There's some horses. Okay. So here's another horse. There's a little peg where the, the guy's foot goes in. It looks like I had painted blood like that's a blood hole. <laughs> I'm just picking out horses, putting them in. There's another knight with no head. Probably at the bottom of what I'm going through, there's going to be a ton of heads. I am thinking... Here's a 50s looking cowboy. Here's a horse missing a tail. It looks like those spots were painted on by my brother. Oh, here's a door to the stagecoach. Look at that. I imagine somebody would be interested in watching today's television. <gasps> Parking out of that truck? Are you kidding me? Okay, how does this go in? Shit! I mean, I mean gosh darn it. Oh! Okay. Well, this door goes here. This door hasn't been on the stagecoach since probably. Oh, I see. Um, the door is almost made out of a, a bendable plastic, so I could fit it back on. 
So now the door is back on the stagecoach for the first time since um, probably 1974. Now I gotta see if I can find the, the door for the other side. And here it is. I didn't stage this, ladies and gentlemen. It looks like I staged this. Like, uh, look, I just bought this giant collection. I bet it's going to be worthless. Oh, look, there's an Amazing Fantasy 15 in it. <laughs> you know? No. This dog is uh, going mad, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, so the stagecoach now has doors. The stagecoach is pretty much back where it should be. It's got horses. Now the rider, uh, I mean the uh, damn, the darn uh, guy that, the fellow that uh, controls it. This is a Civil War guy. It looks like he's supposed to be holding something in that hand. You can take the arms off and put them on other guys and stuff. I Here's a guy that's been shot with an arrow in his side. Look at that. Okay. Oh. Look, it's a bad guy getting away with the loot, but he's missing a cowboy hat. Are there... Oh, look, a cowboy. <laughs> I wonder if it fits on this guy. Would a yellow hat go with an orange? I, I, I mean, these things need to be molded on there. It's not like boys don't, boys aren't like playing with Barbies. They don't want to like change hats on their cowboys. Keep the cowboy hat on the guy, man. It's, uh, it fell off again. These tracer darts are everywhere from the Star Trek tracer gun. At least for a while it was called the Star Trek tracer gun. I've got them everywhere. Every time I find it, it's a cherished relic from the past. I'm looking for heads, ladies and gentlemen. Here's a cactus. Oh. Here's more of those uh, horses. I think maybe there was a... How does this work, man? Maybe they're identical. So I must have had two separate stagecoaches. Yes, this one... Okay, I just need one of those for that stagecoach. Let me see what the manufacturer is of the stagecoach so I could research it on eBay or something. Tempo Toys, T-I-M-P-O Toys, made in England. So I need to be looking them up. Oh, the cannon! Oh my gosh! This is this is a great day, man. The Civil War cannon. Where's the other damn wheel? I saw I thought I saw two wheels. I got to have both wheels. Oh. Here's a black cannon. Um That's pretty cool. Look at this old, this is for stickers for audio cassettes. Here's the doors, the door to another stagecoach. Where that is, perhaps lost to time, ladies and gentlemen. Is this from He-Man? Somebody gave me this. He was going to donate it to Goodwill, like a whole box of toys. This friend of mine back in the 90s. Because he had this Zen, I don't know, some kind of Buddhist philosophy. If I donate all these toys to Goodwill, lots of toys will come back to me. He thought 
you know, like a prosperity doctrine. But he, but he saw, and he was just about to put all this big box of toys, and I said, no, let me have it. I didn't even collect this stuff, but I thought, man, I could do maybe something with this insane-looking vehicle. Maybe put Pee Wee Herman in it. Actually, that's a good idea. I've got a Pee Wee Herman in the other room. That'll be his vehicle, ladies and gentlemen. Um, yeah, these guys that have been shot on the horses always are, are fun. Where's the other wheel? Oh, I found it. <laughs> so now I have a complete cannon. And this thing actually fired real uh, balls, I believe. It fired these ball shit, uh, these little balls. Does it fit in that? No, it doesn't. It's the other one that fired those balls. Does that fit in there? No, that doesn't. I have a can. I had a can in some. No, it wasn't that either. It was. This is a catapult. A sword. A Civil War sword. Yeah, this is a catapult. It's falling apart. There's another one upstairs I, I found. This would, this catapult, this medieval catapult, would shoot these balls. Anyway, I think I just saw a guy that didn't have a sword in his hand. Now I found a sword. I've got to organize these accessories somehow. You know, like, here's a guy that's supposed to be manning a cannon. Here's a, here's a guy with an arrow. <laughs> they like making these these those toys with the like that. Oh, is this the right? Is this the guy? I think could it be the guy that that goes on the stage show? It's a FedEx truck. I wonder if I'm getting something. Well, I didn't order anything. Maybe my wife ordered something. It stopped in front of the house. FedEx standing right in front of the house. Will the driver get out, run up, and give me something cool right here on the air? We will find out in a moment. Unless someone sent me a nice, uh, you know, I don't know, but it looks like he's pretty good. He looks like he's the right bright colors to go with this, but I will uh, look it up on eBay. He's still there. Unless he's talking to that vehicle. Oh, he's starting to move away. Oh, <sighs> it drove away, ladies and gentlemen. No presents today. Well, that's pretty cool. So I have a... Uh, I gotta put this somewhere where the dog won't get into it. Um, that's neat that I have um, put the uh, stagecoach back together. Uh -oh. I, I'm, I'm, I just need to lose weight, and um, there's something called turmeric. My wife's giving me some some extra supplements that she thinks will help me with my uh, the pain I'm having and stuff. Well, I could put this Civil War cannon on display somewhere. Uh, where would be a good place? Maybe next to these guys. I could put the this devil guy behind the cannon. It's going to roll off, though. No, it looks like they're a military battalion that has a cannon. Oh, my phone's letting me record longer today than usual. Um, I'm going to put this, this covered, this... Uh, Stagecoach on top of the refrigerator here. It looks pretty neat.
Wells Fargo. Um, no, that's the wrong horses. I guess I should make a display with a bunch of horses. Uh, oh man, I don't know how to do this. Oh, I'll turn it around. Okay. I'll give it a four horse. It seems like they had four horses sometimes in the old westerns. It seems like in the John Wayne movies. I like to watch the 1930 stagecoach movie uh, sometimes with my wife. Um, all right. So what do you think there? And what was the toy company? Tempo Toy? I'll, I'll, I'll watch it again when I... Okay, maybe we can have this... Put this cowboy there. Maybe I'll put this guy up on top. No, or here. Let's see, when you open the refrigerator, is it gonna jostle everything? No, it stays pretty stable. Um, there's some, uh, look at this. For the 500th, 500th subscriber party, we've got um, Red Rambler beer. Beatnik Sour. Um, yeah, Friday night. Um, 